Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. We appreciate you joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button to, uh, on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the presenters cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions going on, so please uh, visit the full schedule at CACRO.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be made available to, uh, to be viewed on demand at that way, same website, CACRO.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Excellent, thank you so much. All right, everyone, hi, my name is Nathan Goss. And uh, I am Assistant uh, Vice President uh, of Enrollment Management here uh, at Brunel University. We are so glad that you joined us today. Um, and we will get into our uh, presentation and also introduce um, our presenters. Uh, again, my name is Nathan Goss. I'm AVP for Enrollment Management. I've been at Brunel for uh, almost 16 years now and have worked with our transfer population, our graduate populations as well. And uh, I am so happy to interact uh, with you all today. Jim, would you like to introduce yourself? I should unmute, that would help. My <laughs> name is Jennifer Benning and I am a senior admission specialist here for now. And I've been here um, about four years. I recruit for uh, most of our nursing programs. Um, and my, my fun fact about me right now is that I have a 10-week-old kitten who's climbing a cat tree over here, and I'm hoping that he stays there so that we can get through this without any appearances. <laughs> hey, guys. My name's Sydney. Uh, I am a transfer admission specialist. I've been at Bernal for about two and a half years now. Uh, I recruit for all of our undergraduate transfer um, uh, fine arts and humanities programs, some of our business as well as a couple graduate programs. Uh, my fun fact about me is I have been skydiving. Nice. Wow, I did not know that. That's awesome, I, I, forgot, to, I <laughs> forgot to mention my fun fact. Um, oh gosh, let's see. Um, I, I, oh gosh, I, I like to mountain bike and my wife calls it our third car. So, um, <laughs> so I try to bike as, as much in and often uh, as I can and uh, there's some Beautiful trails there in both South and North Carolina. So um, some great riding and, and pretty views and vistas up there. So uh, here is our uh, itinerary today at a glance. Uh, we will, I will give you a, uh, an overview of Brunel University, uh, where we are located, uh, what makes Brunel unique. Um, then Jen Benning will cover our health science BSN programs. Uh, Sydney will cover fine arts and uh, more uh, different programs that we offer within College of Humanities, uh, Fine Arts, as well as business education. And then I will uh, cover financial aid and affordability here at Brunel University. And then of course, at the end of our presentation, we're happy to entertain whatever questions you may have and also common questions uh, that we receive from uh, our applicants. We were founded in 1878. We are a private institution located here in Northeast Georgia. Uh, it is important for you to know that we do have regional accreditation status through SACS. So you have the peace of mind knowing that your degree will be recognized wherever you go, should you continue your studies at another institution for graduate or doctoral programs. Uh, we uh, have a women's college, many people still have a perception of Brown University as being only a women's college, uh, but that is only partially true. We have a women's college, but we have been co-ed for many years now and all of our programs uh, are open to men. And uh, we do have a specialized program uh, for women here at Brown. We're able to house uh, residential students, both men and women uh, here at our historic Gainesville campus. We've been offering accessible education since 1972 to non-traditional adults, uh, non-traditional students. And we've been doing online since 1999. So it's not a new format for us. We've been doing accessible education modalities and deliveries for a very long time. So depending on your program choice and selection, 
you may be able to do your entire program 100% online here at Bernal University as well. Um, but all of our classes uh, for many of our programs, should I say, um, some of those are offered only in an in-person experience. Of course, with the pandemic, we've made adjustments as any other school has. And so a lot of our programs have become hybridized. So with contact time being online as well as in person and also taking proper uh, spatial accommodations to accommodate for appropriate spacing. One of the unique features and benefits of Bernal University is our student to teacher ratio. Uh, our average student teacher ratio is 11 to one. So that ensures that you have a quality um, experience as a Bernal student. You're not lost in the crowd and you don't become another number here at Bernal University. Your professors as well as your peers will get to know you, your professional um, goals and aspirations and be able to, to guide you throughout the tenure of your academic program. Uh, we offer a very caring and nurturing environment in all of our platforms here at Bernal University. If there's one attribute of Bernal that students continuously uh, speak of is that Bernal is a nurturing environment, uh, a caring place for students to study. Uh, we have nearly 50 student run clubs and organizations here at our historic campus. We have study abroad opportunities uh, that take place mainly in the summer, uh, both in uh, Cancun, uh, Mexico for uh, many of our health science and biology students, uh, for our fine arts students and interior design. Uh, we do trips every other year to Western Europe. 14 athletic teams for the women's college. Uh, we are also a military friendly institution. So whatever uh, VA benefits that you have and qualify for, you can certainly use them here at Bernal University. Uh, experienced faculty with a focus on quality matters standards, and we use innovative teaching methods and student engagement opportunities to help deliver those classes. Again, we've been able to make that transition during the pandemic very um, swiftly because we've been doing online since 1999. And so by offering a hybridized approach, we've been able to facilitate and keep our classes going um, while keeping those high touch programs like nursing, like occupational therapy um, uh, through the fall semester uh, without any uh, major complications. Our location, we are one hour northeast of Atlanta, uh, 45 minutes to the Chattahoochee National Forest. So you're a short drive to the mountains for hiking, for fishing. Uh, we are also a, a, a lake community. Gainesville, Georgia is uh, located near the largest man-made lake in the Southeast, Lake Lanier. And so it offers plenty of opportunities for relaxing, um, for boating, fishing, whatever you like to do. Gainesville retains a very small town atmosphere. We have a historic square with some great shops and restaurants, but you also have the accessibility uh, for um, more of a, a big city setting by driving simply down 985 and 85 to Atlanta uh, for sporting events, for concerts, uh, shopping, some great cosmopolitan atmosphere, of course, in Atlanta. But it's a great location because we are out of the hustle and bustle of the city, yet close to the mountains to get away from everything as well. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jen Benning to introduce our programs, Health and, Health and Science, uh, specifically our BSN program. Yeah, so we have a to what we call our traditional Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. It is a BSN. It's two years in, in length after your prerequisite courses are completed. Um, if, you, if you are transferring in, if you are um, a freshman student without college experience, then you'd have two years of prerequisites before you could apply to the program. We begin in both the fall and spring semesters with our cohorts and we seat 50 students in each one. It's held um, during the day, during the week, um, certainly that could change a little uh, time-wise during the week, depending on your clinical rotation assignment and your class schedule. But generally speaking, it is a Monday through Friday during the day um, program. To get into our program, you have to have a minimum 2.75 science GPA, and that's going to be the courses of microbiology, chemistry, anatomy and physiology one, and anatomy and physiology two. 
you have to have a minimum 2.75 cumulative GPA, meaning all of the college coursework uh, that you've attempted. And you have to take the HESI with us. Um, we don't accept HESI or T scores from other institutions. You have to take it with us and you have to get a minimum 75 overall in addition to a minimum 75 in the areas of anatomy and physiology, chemistry and math. So to apply with us, you simply need to fill out our undergraduate application at bernau.edu slash apply. You will apply as a health science pre-nursing student. And if you're admitted into the program, your major would then be changed in, into nursing. So you fill out the application and submit all of your official transcripts from your previous coursework. If there are any other documents we need, um, such as a passport, English proficiency skills, um, uh, scores rather, um, any other documents, we'll let you know, but you'll submit all of those. And then from there, we'll make a decision for general admission. If you're admitted for general admission, we'll have you meet with an advisor and she'll help you determine your readiness to apply to the program. If you are ready, you'll fill out the application and you'll schedule the HESI with us. And um, if you pass, then, then you would be admitted into the program if you meet the requirements. Um, if not, uh, if, you don't meet, if you don't meet the requirements yet or you don't have your prerequisites completed, you would work on those. And then once you have completed them, um, you would then be able to apply to the program. Now our deadlines for uh, the spring program for next year, well, let's start with fall. For fall of 21, which is the next cohort for which you can apply, the deadline is going to be May 1st. So you need to be admitted for general admission, have your nursing application submitted and have the HESI taken and passed by May 1st. We'll start accepting applications for that cohort um, around the first of the year. For spring of 22, the deadline is going to be um, October 1st for those same items. Um, and so you would just wanna make sure that if, if you're interested in that, you would make sure you meet the deadlines. Um, and certainly if you have any questions about any of this, my contact information will be at the end of, of the presentation and you can also ask questions then as well. You know, Jen, one of the unique features about the BSN program too um, are the clinical rotations that are held on a weekly basis for nursing students. Can you talk a little bit about um, where those are held and how those are held? Sure. So you will have um, you'll have a coordinator who will assign your clinical rotation. Now you can, if you have a if you have a preference, if you want to work with children, for instance, um, and you want a peds rotation, you can put in for that. Um, it may not be honored, but it certainly is something that we consider if you have a, a specific area you want to work with. The uh, clinicals are all held near the, the main campus, near our campus in Gainesville. We do work with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. We work with the um, Northeast Georgia Health System. Uh, the medical center is, is literally in our backyard. Um, and, and there are lots of, of clinics and, and doctor's offices, um, you know, very near that hospital. So you have lots of opportunities, um, not only to network during, during your clinicals, but that's a good way too, in terms of employment once you have completed the program. Now, the other thing I, I didn't mention um, is that once you complete our program, not only do you earn the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, but you can sit for the NCLEX, which is the state board exam. And if you pass that, that's how you earn your RN licensure. So in terms of how um, the clinicals work, you would, be, you would be working near the school. Um, and depending on your, your clinical uh, rotation, for the most part, right now, clinicals are being held on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That could certainly change in the future, but for now, they are Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, but um, that's just a little bit about how our clinicals work and, and a little bit more about the NCLEX and the networking piece of it as well. Perfect. Thank you, Jan. I really appreciate that. And I believe our pass rate, our latest pass rate for the program was close to 95%. Is that right? Um, 
Yeah, just a little bit under that, but yeah. Very good, excellent. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our fine arts and humanities programs. Um, before I get into the breakdown of each and what they have to offer, the admissions requirements, um, they're pretty straightforward. You just need to submit, uh, you have to have a GPA of at least 2.0 or, or higher, and then we would need official transcripts from every college or university that you've attended. We are technically on a rolling admissions process for this for all of these programs, meaning if you wanted to start in the fall, um, you know, I suggest you just have everything turned in about a month before classes start in August. Um, same for spring, just so you have time to meet with your advisor, get everything squared away with financial aid and just tie up any other loose ends that you might have. So um, I've kind of grouped these out. Um, so our fine arts programs, they we have interior design which is an amazing program. Um, it offers so many, all these offer so many hands-on experiences, but particularly with this program, each year our students go to the High Museum of Art in Atlanta and actually present a senior project, which majority of students have an empty shell that they actually get to fill and create whatever kind of room or setting they want, and they can present that to the public in Atlanta. A great networking opportunity um, and just a really good experience all around. And then you have fashion. Fashion is broken down into two BFAs. We have fashion design and we have fashion merchandising. So design is more the traditional how to make clothes, what works best with um, what materials. And then the fashion merchandising focuses more on the retail and the business side of fashion. Um, with both of these uh, majors, you get to have internships, um, you get the latest technology that's actually used in the field currently today. We, we have that here at Brunel. So that just kind of gives you a leg up when you um, go to apply for jobs as you have experience working with that specific technology. Um, we have studio art, which is more of a broad general overview. Um, it's, it's kind of foundational. And then you have different specializations you can get within or concentrations within that major, such as um, ceramics, sculpture, art history, museum studies. Um, I think that's it. But yeah, you can, um, you know, add on, you can do different concentrations, you can add a minor to any of these other majors if you wanted, if you're really interested in museum studies, you could tack that on to an interior design degree, which is really cool. And then um, the more performative majors that we have are dance, theater, and music. So with each of these, you will apply to the university, but you do have to audition for each. Uh, and the audition requirements are a little bit different for each program. So if you do decide to apply, I'll be more than happy to walk you through those steps. Um, but you do have to do that in order to get you know, accepted into the um, actual program itself. With dance, um, you can major and uh, specialize in a bunch of different areas of dance. There's many, many different styles that are offered, uh, as well as you can do dance education and become a teacher and instructor. And that's what a lot of our students do. With theater, we have multiple different BFAs that you can get, such as acting, musical theater, uh, costume design and tech, uh, theater and film. And um, you could just get a general bachelor's degree in theater. Um, and again, you know, the audition process for that is, is a little intense, but I can help you walk through all of that as well as music. Um, we have music education, and then you can also do more performative, um, music such as, uh, I think it's voice, piano, uh, and any other instrument you like. Um, and what's cool about our music uh, program too is we offer 11 different ensembles on campus and you don't have to be part of the music uh, and you know program to be a part of that anybody's open um, to doing that and then our humanities we have English conflict resolution and media studies and history and political science um, so each of these you know definitely have their own benefits and like I said you can choose to even just minor in any of these with other majors so you have a lot of different options here um, and I did forget to mention all of these majors are only offered as day-based programs on our Gainesville campus so okay. 
So a little bit more about, you know, why you should choose the fine arts or communities program at Burnell. Um, we do have community recognition. You know, Nathan was talking about Gainesville being a relatively small town by, you know, feel to it. But we have something, especially for our theater, called Gainesville Theater Alliance. Um, and, you know, all of our shows get sold out pretty much every single time we offer a show. Um, they're open to the public. It's really held to a high standard when you're part of this organization and each show allows many networking opportunities because there are professionals at each of our Gainesville Theater Alliance shows whether they are backstage doing some kind of um, you know more on the tech tech side or um, like lighting or there's choreographers all kinds of different things um, we're also building what's called the um, Center of Art and Design at Burnell, which is more of a um, social media type platform where we're advertising for all of our fine art events, whether it's with interior design, art, fashion, stuff like that. So um, just to get a lot of community involvement. Um, each of those programs mentioned in the last slide have annual and renewable scholarship opportunities. So let's just say if you're applying for fashion, you can fill out a scholarship, it's a form, and then you can submit some of your work. And let's say the first year you get $1,500. What's great is the next year you're, you're automatically gonna get $1,500. However, being in the program, you can actually submit more of your work that you've already completed and you have a chance to earn more. Um, so that's a really good benefit and uh, definitely something to look into, especially when you're applying. Um, that I already mentioned about the latest technology that we used in the field. Again, just giving you a leg up. Um, it does prepare you for success after graduation, uh, whether that is with internships, you know, networking, as well as it could possibly secure job opportunities when you are ready to graduate, depending on how you work with your internship. Um, all of these programs too, they are, they have a portfolio requirement. So you actually get to, um, work on your portfolio throughout your entire program. So everything you do goes into this portfolio. So when you're ready to graduate your senior year, you're able to just go ahead and hand that to all of the um, employers that you're, you're wanting to apply for. And then another just uh, cool aspect is you get to work with a lot of students in other different programs. So yes, you'll spend majority of your time with whoever's in your major, but you know we have dance students who will sometimes be in theater shows or um, are musical students sometimes be in those shows when you are, especially if you minor in something else, you can work with students from other, other majors. So it's just a really good cooperative um, group of programs. Sydney, can you also talk about uh, the opportunity for students in their capstone project or capstone, yeah, their capstone projects uh, in High Museum of Art? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, especially with interior design, like I said, we have a partnership with them. So each year we have a group of students that get to go down there and either prevent their, or present their shells or present, um, you know, posters or whatever kind of projects they've done. They actually get to go and present that. And it, again, it's open to the community. So it's a great networking opportunity and um, something else to put on your resume that you, you get to say you've presented at the High Museum. Yeah, and actually membership to the High Museum of Art is free to every Brunel University student. So uh, just like Sydney said, it's a great opportunity. Thank you, Sydney. Mm -hmm. So financial aid, um, when we talk about financial aid specifically for transfer, uh, there are some really unique aspects of our financial aid office uh, that help support our transfer students. We have eight full-time staff to help support students as they matriculate to Brunel University. Uh, we can give uh, advice on loan borrowing options. So our financial um, aid office has access to both uh, private uh, student loans uh, as well as subsidized and unsubsidized loans through the government. We also offer um, different options for students in terms of breaking up their payment plans for any unmet need. And so unmet needs, we have a product uh, for students that allows them to break up their payments uh, over the span of 10 months um, for any unmet need after all their financial aid has been applied. Um, they'll help you explore all the options that, are, uh, that you are uh, available for and qualify for, money management guidance as well, and they can also help you complete your FAFSA uh, should you reach a point in your FAFSA where you're unsure about what to submit, how to submit, 
And our SPASPA school code, just so you know, is 001556. And certainly once you start the FAFSA process, uh, you can easily uh, look up Brunel University. So what makes the financial aid department unique at Brunel is the individualized support that you receive uh, through a very consultative process. Um, and so as you contact the financial aid office, you can schedule a time to interact with them, to ask them about what needs to be submitted, what's outstanding for um, your financial aid packet to be uh, produced and developed in time for you to matriculate and start your classes at Brunel. Um, there is also no appointment required necessarily. We do offer business hours, even though many of our uh, employees are working remotely uh, during the pandemic. Um, all of their phones have been forwarded to um, uh, phones uh, at their home or cell phones so that we can answer them and um, offer customer service uh, for all of our incoming calls. Published contact information is also on our website. If you go to bernal.edu uh, and then you click uh, over on finances, you will see tuition and fees and then contact information for the financial aid office as well. We also offer uh, Brunel, uh, Brunel scholarships as well as grants for our day-based programs. So when you apply for a day-based program here at our historic Gainesville campus, uh, based on your cumulative GPA, um, you will be eligible to receive levels of uh, scholarship and grant. And those will change also depending on if you are a commuter student or a residential student here at Brunel University. Again, based on your cumulative GPA as a transfer student, uh, it's awarded upon acceptance for general uh, admission. In addition to that, there's also nursing scholarships if you're applying for the BSN program. Uh, and if you qualify uh, at that academic level, you may qualify for a nursing scholarship and other ancillary program scholarships like Sydney mentioned for dance, for theater, um, as well as athletics as well. So expectations that you should have in regarding financial aid. Um, the financial aid office will help personalize the best options for you. We know that every family, every person is different. And so they will help individualize your plan to suit your budget and your needs. Uh, our staff have many years of experience in financial aid as well. Uh, the financial aid director, um, and she is a associate vice president for financial aid. Um, she has been here at Brunel for well over 45 years. So she knows the financial aid process in and out. And her and her team can certainly assist you. Financial aid stewards who are approachable, kind, and compassionate. Again, that individualized approach um, here at Brunel University through the admissions process is carried over for financial aid, as well as your tenure academically here at Brunel. Again, like I said before, you're not another number. Uh, we are big enough to serve you, yet small enough to know your goals and your personal aspirations. So key contact and resource information for the financial aid office. Uh, that is the main financial aid office number there, uh, as well as an email that you can reach out in general to uh, the staff with your questions. Uh, also, there is the website. Uh, but if you go to Brunel.edu admissions, you can easily find financial aid there as well. For information regarding verification, there's the link uh, for verifymyfafsa.com. Uh, that is probably something that you're already familiar with being a transfer student. Uh, and then of course, the link for FAFSA uh, to get the ball rolling. If you already have an existing FAFSA and you're wanting to begin classes say in the spring, you can simply log into your FAFSA account and add the Brunel school code, and that will allow you then to transfer all of your financial aid information to our financial aid office so that they can begin packaging. Packaging does begin uh, once you are admitted to Brunel University, and uh, so that can take anywhere from one to two weeks, um, but also note that during the holiday season with staffing and so forth, um, that can be delayed somewhat. So you want to make sure that you start the financial aid process sooner rather than later. Okay, so questions for our team. Not sure if we have any at this moment, but if not, uh, we may have some general questions that we can help answer. And I think one of them that stands out um, 
uh, that I receive, and I'll let Sydney and Jen jump in too, but one of the questions that we receive often here at Brunel University is uh, one that I, uh, uh, topic that I uh, kind of spoke about earlier on uh, in our presentation is the perception of Brown University and it being only a women's college. And again, that is only partially true. Note that all of our programs are open to men and even our residential spaces, um, men live on campus. And, um, and so there are clubs and organizations for both men and women. We do have active sororities here on campus. Uh, we do not have any active fraternities, but we do have opportunities for student government uh, for all of our students, men and women, to participate in. Uh, we have got a great dining hall, Starbucks here on campus in order to keep you caffeinated and shirted up uh, for all of your studies as well. Any other common questions, Jen and Sydney, that you'd like to share that um, you receive from students? Yes, I get one a lot about transfer credit and how we go about, um, you know, establishing what's going to transfer over and what your courses are going to look like. So normally what happens is you'll apply with us first and you'll go ahead and go through the admissions process. Um, it's usually pretty quick, uh, depending on when you get your transcripts turned into us. And then um, from there, once you've received an admissions decision, the registrar's office will complete a program plan and a transfer credit evaluation for you that we'll send to you. And once you get that, you can go ahead and contact your academic advisor and you know schedule um, a meeting with them, whether it's virtually or um, over the phone and they can walk through what has been transferred over if you have questions about it. Um, if you think something should have been transferred over, we'll go through that process with you and then they'll help you determine which classes to register for. And I would also kind of tap into um, <clears throat> the aspect of transferring your coursework uh, for students that have associate level degrees, associate of science, or Associate of Arts, um, your degree will transfer in and will complete all of our liberal or general education classes, uh, thereby allowing you to jump into your major coursework um, and uh, allowing you to complete your program sooner um, because we will recognize all of your general education classes. Uh, so that streamlines your academic um, uh, process or, or rather um, your, your coursework, uh, jumping into your, your majors and not having to repeat any other general education classes that maybe some other institution may have you do. So again, as long as your degree is an associate of science or associate of arts level from a regionally accredited school, you'll get a blanket acceptance for all of your general education classes. For degrees that are applied in nature, so an apply, uh, associate of applied science or an associate of applied arts, uh, those programs will be evaluated on a course by course basis for Brunel University. Um, but essentially that articulation, um, even though it's not a formal articulation, it is within internally at our school for those students that have associate level degrees. One thing I'd, I'd like to add is um, if you are a commuter student with us, if you don't want to live on campus, but you do want to commute with us um, or, or attend and commute, live off campus, there's still plenty of activities um, for commuter students. I think in, in some cases, you know, commuter students, and I was one once when I transferred into a, to a four-year school, I think, you know, we always feel like we're, we're not you know, we're not going to get the same level of attention or the same activities that um, on campus students do, but that's not true. We actually do have, um, you know, plenty of activities, whether you live on campus or you don't. Uh, Nathan mentioned the fraternity or the um, sororities, not fraternities. We also have sports teams. We have um, just a lot of activities that go on throughout the school year that everyone is welcome to participate in. Yeah, and even through uh, the pandemic, we have been uh, offering opportunities for uh, students, staff, faculty alike to connect uh, virtually. And so trivia games, uh, we are actually having a Halloween costume event uh, here on campus, which is going to be obviously socially distanced uh, and everyone masked. So even through the pandemic, 
uh, our student services uh, department division rather and their team uh, work very hard to make sure that students are connecting with each other, um, that they still are able to participate in their sports and their clubs and organizations, uh, all of course by adhering to safety protocols uh, for the pandemic. Uh, but here at Bernal University, we have a beautiful historic campus uh, and it is beautiful outside. And we have a great amphitheater where we show uh, movies on the lawn for students. Um, and so there's uh, all kinds of opportunities for engagement um, here at Bernal. Team, am I missing any other um, unique aspects or questions we receive generally from students? I think you've covered it. Okay, excellent. I also think one of the great things too about Bernal, and, and I don't know if I made this clear, is the accessibility of our faculty. You know, our faculty are able to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to discuss whatever questions you have, either uh, with, uh, within a course, uh, questions about an assignment, uh, but also more broadly about your future. Um, and I think that's what makes Bernal unique is that they are willing to take, set aside the time to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and talk about your future uh, and how Bernal can help you reach and attain those academic and professional goals you might have. And I would be remiss to not show you our mascot. So we are the Golden Tigers. And uh, so I just like to thank you for uh, coming to our information session today. Uh, we're so glad that you have selected Bernal University to be a potential school for you to matriculate to. And it's kind of hard to take me serious, I guess, with a, uh, a golden tiger on our head. But we want to thank you for attending today. And also let you know that you can sign up for events, both virtual as well as on-campus tours here at our historic campus by visiting the site listed on your screen now. So thank you for attending. Team, any other last thoughts? That's all. <laughs> I brushed my teeth today. You like that? <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's tremendous talent because he was also able to still advance the slides during all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good deal. Thank you all for joining us. Um, when you close this window, you'll get a link to a short four question survey. We appreciate any feedback that you can provide for us. Also, this is just one of many sessions going on. So please visit and view the full schedule and sign up for other sessions at CACRO.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. And in about a week's time, you'll be able to view this session as well as all others on the CACRO website, CACRO.org. Thanks again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.